time will spend for me, by golly. I get, I get a ride in the new uh, fire truck. Oh, right on. <laughs> the big tall one? Yeah, yeah, the brand new one. Yeah. All righty. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Any, any idea where she went? Yes. Oh. We'll be right back. Oh, okay. Well, that particular case, we'll time. wait. Yeah. 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 No, no. No, you don't rush a woman there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're we'll going. Right. Uh, at this time, uh, we're going to go into the uh, urban renewal. And so, uh, Madam Chair, if you want to take that away for us, please. You betcha. Um, we have a budget. The Budget Committee approved a, a, botch, a budget, so now we need to adopt it via resolution. Um, are there any questions before I ask the motion? All right, so we make a motion to the resolution. This is 1819-12. GBURA. This is GBURA 1819-02, and this is on page 52 of your packet. Well, I'm on the wrong page. Somebody else needs to pick it up and watch me page you. Mm -hmm. 52. I'm, I'm paging. Page 52 of the packet. Mm -hmm. I thought I was on the right page, Administrator. I thought I was doing good. Councilor Brown, did you want to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the resolution R1819-02, resolution by the Bowlby Truman Renewal Agency adopting the fiscal year 2019-2020 budget making appropriations, declaring tax increment, and collecting the maximum amount of division of tax. For a second? I will second that. Seconded by Councilor Cavano. Question? Aye. 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 Okay, motion pass. Uh, we will now close the, the renewal meeting. And we will now resume the City Council agenda. And, uh, the first is a resolution R1819-15 USCM slant NLC, supporting local cable franchising. This was the, um, the resolution that we just discussed right before the break, that if, right. if the council would like to adopt it, um, there it is. Yes, ma'am. Well, I make a motion that we approve resolution R1819-15, a resolution affirming the positions of the United States Conference of Mayors and National League of Cities supporting local cable franchising, including non-monetary obligations. Thank you, ma'am. Is there a second to that? I'll second that. Council McGowan. Seconds? Discussion? Question? Aye. 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 Motion passed unanimously. Resolution R18. 19-14 resolution for state revenue sharing. This is something, of course, that we had the public hearing on, and so if we may have, yes, ma'am. You give me the floor, I'll make the motions. <laughs> I make a motion we adopt resolution R819-14, a resolution declaring the city's election to receive the state shared revenues. Second that. Motion been made, it has been seconded. Discussion, question. Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Resolution R1819-12, adopting fiscal year 2019-2020 budget, another uh, open hearing that we have. Is there a motion? Yes, ma'am. I make a motion we adopt resolution R1819-12, a resolution adopting the fiscal year 2019-2020 budget, making appropriations, imposing, and categorizing the city tax. Thank you, ma'am. Second? I'll second. Uh, I'm trying to the counselor. <laughs> 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 I got one. I don't want any senior moments right here. That's okay. Motion. <laughs> Can you think of the word counselor? All right. Is there any, uh, any discussion? Question? Aye. 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 Thank you. Motion passes in this way. Uh, resolution R1819-13, uh, Purpose and Review Times for Reserve Funds. Um, actually, number 11, one, one above. 
uh, this is for the supplemental budget for this year. Um, this is item number D. And if you have any questions about the three items in there, um, please just let me know. Yes, ma'am. I make the motion we adopt resolution 1819-11, a resolution adopting a supplemental budget for physical year 2018-2019 and transferring appropriations. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Councilor Brown. All right. Discussion? Question? Aye. 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 Motion passed unanimously. Now we start funds. What's that, ma'am? Now we start funds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was for the reserve funds, right? That was something budget. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, oh, just, okay. I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah. I skipped one. And just real quickly on the reserve funds, there I had in my notes that um, there was a couple of changes that you wanted added before adoption, and I put those in bold. Uh, under the non-insured losses and unemployment reserve fund, uh, you had decided at the budget hearing when the fund reserve exceeds $100,000, the excess funds will be transferred to the street culvert repair reserve fund at year end. Um, the second one was the water deposit re reserve fund. Uh, beginning fiscal year 1920, deposits older than 10 years old will be refunded to customer accounts to reduce the trust liability. And then uh, streets and culvert repair fund. Beginning fiscal year 1920, this fund is renamed from the culvert replacement reserve to the streets and culvert repair reserve. The fund will continue to receive transfers for the culvert repairs and will also receive monthly street repair reserve fees. So all the other um, reserve fund language is the same. So that was just added into each one. Yes, ma'am. I'll make the motion we adopt resolution 191819. Motion been made. It is not the right number. 1819-13. It isn't 1819-13. It's 1718-20, isn't it? It should be. I make a motion we adopt resolution R17. No? 1919. What's the wrong number, Judy? <laughs> where are you looking? I'm looking at uh, reserve funds on the uh, where it said the cheat sheet for the motions. Um, it's repealing 1718. Oh, okay. I make, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I make a motion we adopt resolution 1819-13, a resolution setting the purpose and review times for municipal fund, reserve funds, and repealing resolution R1718-20 and any other resolutions that may be in conflict. I apologize. Thank you, ma'am. Is there a second to that? Second. Councilor All right. Discussion. Yes, ma'am. Just wanted to point out, um, I think the administrator mentioned it earlier that um, the budget committee decided to uh, refund uh, significant years of uh, deposit money for water and sewer that will go on to people's accounts uh, somewhere around the early this year. Any other uh, discussion? Question? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Second reading of the uh, ordinance 669. This is the sign code revision. Did everybody get a chance to take a look at that? Uh, I'll look revised. Okay, so I updated the definition to <coughs> include more of the language from Councillor Kaufman's information that she had provided. And then she had specifically asked that um, certain sections from that information that she provided be added in there, and so I added those as well. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Do we have a motion? Yeah. I make a motion that council approve the second reading of ordinance number 669 and ordinance amending ordinance 643, which adopted a revised Gold Beach business code. Thank you, sir. Is there a second to that? Second. Uh, council Brennan seconds. Discussion? Question? Okay, so to make the second reading, I have to read it into the record by title only. Ordinance number 669 and ordinance amending ordinance 643, which adopted a revised Gold Beach business code. Second reading. So this will, unless the council declares an emergency, this will go into effect 30 days from today. Thank you, ma'am. All right. 
This is a monthly report to the council from uh, Gold Beach uh, Main Street Coordinator, Ariel Kane. Okay. Good evening. Uh, I was asked to speak a little bit louder than I usually do, so please just let me know if it's loud enough or not. Um, I'm sorry for missing May's meeting. I was able to attend an Oregon Economic Development Association um, workshop with Councilor Madison, actually. Um, and so that is why I missed the report from last month. And part of why my report out is so large this month, but don't worry, I won't read every document to you again. Um, but I did miss a few things, and so I wanted to give the council invitations to the community celebration that will be hosted by Gold Beach Main Street. community celebration is actually the Urban Renewal Ventures that Lori had talked about earlier. In addition to the Oregon Main Street Revitalization Grant, which I believe um, was included in my inclusion for last month's packet. And so we were just really excited to celebrate everything that's been happening in the community, the installation of the benches, all of the community volunteer hours that have been put into these different projects and the start of this new project. Um, of course, everybody on the council is definitely welcome. You guys were a big part of why we were able to do the Urban Renewal Bench Project. And so, yes, I have to see that. It's June 21st from 5.30 to 8 p.m. Another update that I have for you is we are now in the second part of the rare application for 2019-2020. We were accepted to do a second community application, and so we will go forward with interviews. And so interviews will take place um, in July, I believe. So hopefully after that round of interviews, we'll find out if you will receive another rare participant. That's also very exciting for us. Um, and then as Lori mentioned, we have almost all of the benches in place. We're still waiting to put in the city bench, but the city bench will actually be displayed at this community celebration. So if you'd like to see it before it gets installed in front of the police station, it's a good opportunity to come. All right, and then the next thing I wanted to talk about was the WIDA workshop that I attended. I was invited as a representative for Gold Beach Main Street, but also as a rare participant. A lot of rare participants in Oregon participate in economic development of various kinds, sometimes through Main Street organizations, sometimes through city, gov city government or county entities. Um, and for the Main Street side, the approach includes, I think I've talked about a four-pronged approach. So it's design, which you've seen a lot of, and outreach, which we've done a lot of this year as well, and promotion, which I hope will increase, as well as economic vitality. Um, so the goal for that approach is to have a livable, diverse, vibrant, main center to the town, which we've established as Main Street or Ellensburg Avenue. And so this workshop was about entrepreneurship and innovation ecosystems. And so ecosystems are about collaboration, different entities, different people being a part of working towards uh, economic development in an area, specifically focusing on entrepreneurs. Startups are the majority of new jobs every year, and so it is an important thing for not just urban areas, but also rural areas to have small startups, entrepreneurs, and innovators that have jobs opening up in the area. Um, so the resources that I included are the different PowerPoints that we went through. Um, it was a very long workshop. It was about eight hours, and many different organizations participated. I'm sure someone can talk about it at great length, too, as well. Um, and one thing I wanted to point out was that the Urban Renewal Agency had talked about potentially in the future looking at hiring someone, a staff person who would be able to support businesses and connect them to resources. So the organization that led this workshop was RAIN, Oregon RAIN, is an entity similar to RARE who provides venture catalysts, so they specifically focus on economic development and supporting entrepreneurs. Usually they are entrepreneurs themselves, so they have a great wealth of knowledge. And so this is an opportunity, if in the future you ever decide that you want to engage with that program, a really good program, um, RARE also works alongside them. One of the RARE participants who works as a venture catalyst in Benita, Oregon, um, was there and he presented on behalf of RARE, so they have a very close relationship. So that's something of interest potentially to the city council. And then the last thing that I included was um, an in 
Gold Beach Main Street had been invited to participate in a tour with the Ford Family Foundation, and this was specifically around visioning processes. Um, that can mean a lot of different things, I think, and sometimes it manifests as a strategic plan, which I know you are working on, and um, you're doing those continual updates to your strategic plan. Um, so the Vision Through Action Tour was the Ford Family Foundation inviting different communities who are in different parts of a visioning process um, to join other communities where they are and learn about their visioning process. So we joined cities from as big as Bend to as small <coughs> as Cape Junction um, to go to different areas and learn about the visioning process. Some of it was community-led with very little city involvement. Some of it was entirely city-led with a lot of community or little community involvement. So it was really interesting to see how these different processes worked in these different communities. I included some of the information from the tour and how these different processes manifested. For the city of Coburg, it was a simple statement. They came up with a statement of what the vision of their future looks like as a city and as a community. For Newport, it manifested in ordinances. Um, it just depended on what the community wanted, so it was a very high participation process for coming up with a vision. So sometimes, it, like I said, it comes out as a strategic plan. Sometimes it looks like a document that leads several organizations to work together to common goals and then the goals are determined by the community processes through different workshops or through different participatory focus groups. It really depends on what the community wants. Um, and I believe that we were invited by the Ford Family Foundation because there is just a lot going on in Gold Beach right now. And with uh, Gold Beach Main Street sort of expanding their scope of work and working more with the city and their urban renewal agency, it was just a great opportunity to learn how different organizations like us or unlike us work together to create common vision for the future. Thank you very much. Anybody? Yes, ma'am? Is this your last meeting with us? <coughs> it is not. Yeah. Okay. Got one, one more. more time. Okay. <laughs> Next time will be a, a little bit more visual, though. I'm looking okay. forward to giving an annual, the whole term update for you guys. So we'll have the TV set up for you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Now this is a request for review of council determination regarding status of the conditional use permit in GBC 1701. Uh, this will be open for testimony. And I do have process and partly that was because um, when the application originally came in uh, we did not have a quorum for the Planning Commission so after a series of meetings at the Planning Commission level it got bumped up to the City Council there was actually two applications right next door to each other one was denied one was approved with conditions um, that was in 2017 um, I want to say we had like four hearings all together on that one. Um, it came to my attention with my planning director's hat in January that um, I made a determination that their conditional use permit had expired and it came about because um, they hadn't paid their water bill yet because nothing had been going on there. So um, I sent a letter to the property owners and said, you know, hey, your conditional use permit has expired and um, you know, you're going to have to decide what you want to do. So they contacted me and said, well, is there anything we can do? And I said, well, not really. I mean, you can, you can try to plead your case to the council. And so it's not, it's not really, it was not really an appeal. It was a ask, ask to have the council review the determination that staff had made. And so at that, at that meeting in April, um, the council heard testimony from the property owners submitted some written testimony and then we also had her on the phone answering some questions and so at the end of that meeting um, it was determined that the permit the 
staff decision was overturned by the council and let me see if I can find the, what the letter was that I wrote to them. Okay, so in, at the end of April, I wrote to the property owner and said that, um, that following the review at the city council, that they overturned the decision for the following specific reasons. That a building permit for the proposed interior remodel construction was applied for and issued in a timely fashion and the building permit was still active and valid. Uh, the license to operate, one of the conditions that the planning department had looked at was that they didn't have their OLCC license yet. Um, but when I contacted OLCC, they said that was through no negligence on their part. It was that um, because the marijuana stuff had, had been going on for about a year and a half, two years now, the OLCC was focusing more on enforcement than issuing of new licenses. So they were in the queue, they had submitted their um, application in a timely fashion for their license. It's just OLCC was not processing it yet, so it was kind of bottlenecked there. So the license to operate the facility through OLCC had been applied for in a timely fashion, and the on-hold status of the permit was um, due to staffing priorities at OLCC and not because um, they had denied the applicants their license. And then finally, um, and, and I have to say from a staff standpoint that if, I, if, the, if the applicant had contacted me and told me what she told the council, we probably wouldn't even be here, that they would have, their permit would still have been valid. But she did, as you recall, have a very serious life-threatening health condition. And, um, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I know when there's something going on in your life there, everything kind of stops to just get better. So, and in the, in the middle of all of that, she had a, a baby too. So, so there were reasons. So the council voted um, to overturn the decision that I made and say that the permit was still valid. And so then as you recall at the May meeting, um, Ms. Bernard came and asked for the council to reconsider that reconsideration. So that's what tonight is about. Um, and, and I'm just gonna kind of circle back to say what I always say at these meetings. We're not here to decide if pot is a good thing or a bad thing. The state's already made that decision. We're just here to talk about the redetermination that was made at the April meeting. And so the decision before you tonight is the same thing that was before you in April, is that do you wanna relook at the determination that you made? So um, there are, after the, May meeting when Ms. Bernard asked that it be reconsidered. I did go back and get all of the people that had participated in the prior meetings as well as the property owners that would be notified if it was a land use action. And I did send them a written notice of this meeting and that's included in your packet at page 122. It basically just said um, a request had been made for this to be re-reviewed. Um, this is the time to come and talk to the council if you want to address them. And then all of the prior information from the previous report is in there as well. All right, thank you, Um I'm gonna go ahead and uh, before council deliberates, because I want them to hear what uh, you have to say, and there are a few people out there that I know. I've got a couple of uh, sign-up sheets here. Uh, and to begin with, uh, a Marsh Bernard, if you would please, ma'am. Well, uh, you you allowed their permit to go for another full year, which I don't feel was the right thing to do, and I'd like you to reconsider that. Um, I, I just do not feel like it was right to allow them that one year extension on their permit without uh, the property owners and the people in the community to respond to, to the, what happened with them. Uh, and that's really all I need to say right now, I think. All right, thank, thank you. you. And 
Barry Kimbrough. Kimbrough. Sorry. My name is Barry Kimbrough, and I'm a new citizen here at Gold Beach. My family, uh, my wife, and our three children, ages six, nine, and 14, we have two girls, and our youngest is a son, um, moved here in March. We, um, thank you. We came uh, because of my job. I'm the minister at the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Gold Beach and in Brookings. Um, temporarily, we stayed in Crescent City for several months before we were able to find a home, and we ended up here, and we're really happy here. We live on Hunter Creek Heights, and uh, I've been very happy to find a home there. I am here tonight uh, because I was recently informed of the new marijuana store application to uh, have a business here in Gold Beach. And I speak for myself and for my church tonight. Uh, the Seventh-day Adventist Church has had a long-standing tradition of promoting health and, and uh, temperance. Temperance meaning the uh, wise use of good things and, and avoiding of bad things. Um, my understanding is that there is a marijuana store here in the local area that meets a need for the medical marijuana needs of those in this area. And so my question is, do we need another store in this area to provide that? Um, today, I visited the marijuana store on the Main Street in Brookings. And I was very interested. Uh, they had this card that talks about the dangers of marijuana for children. Uh, unborn and born, and I, if it's okay with you, I can give everybody a copy of it. Um, I have a few more here, and I'll leave them if anybody wants to take one. Uh, but my understanding is that that the uh, the store owners are actually required by law to give this card to everyone who buys marijuana in the store, and uh, people are free to take it or or deposit it in a in the receptacle if they don't want to keep it. But in connection to the risks for our children. I am very impressed with the mission statement of the city of Gold Beach here that we find at the bottom of the page of our agenda. The city of Gold Beach is dedicated to enhancing quality of life while promoting health, safety, and welfare of our citizens, uh, businesses, and visitors. I think that's a great mission statement. And I know that another uh, marijuana store is going to bring in money. It's going to bring in tax money. But my question in connection to that is, will it bring health and stronger families and less risks for our children if we add another store? Um, it doesn't seem to me that, that it would contribute to that. Uh, do we want to make marijuana more accessible to young mothers who are spoken to in this uh, card? Uh, do we want to make it more accessible than it already is to our high school students? Um, uh, those who have struggled with addictions and are trying to stay away from it, do we want to make it easier for them uh, to have access to it? And so um, I think my position is clear on this. And I do thank you for letting me have a chance to say a few words about that. Thank you. Sir. Appreciate it. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak out on this subject? Yes, ma'am. You're just uh, state your name. <coughs> Linda Mirica. Um, 
we raised our family in Medford for 24 years, and this was our safe haven to come over and breathe. <laughs> so we're quite familiar with the area. Our son married a local gal. It was a little scary when we were looking for a house three years ago to move over here. Between Jasmine and Karen, they knew where everybody lived. I knew they knew everyone in town, but as we were driving all the way from Highbridge up north and around, it, between the mom and daughter, they said, oh, so-and-so lives there. And I looked at them and said, this is kind of scary. <laughs> you don't really know everybody. You know where they live. But having said that, I've lived in big cities, bigger than I ever would have wanted to. I love living rural. I love living in such a beautiful place. Um, I was a military brat um, and raised every two to four years, we would be forced to move to another place. Um, having said that, this, uh, I feel fortunate to live here and to live in such a beautiful place. So um, the thing that I have always had stressed to me by the people around me is that Gold Peach takes care of their own. And you know, we go to the high school sports events and stuff to support the team. And when you're um, low on the totem pole of talent because of size, it has to be a real active, being an um, ambitious citizen who wants to, you know, they're, they're not there to go into professional sport. They're there to have a team and to have community support. And I commend the city of Go Beach for the way they support their kids. As a grandmother of two daughters growing up here, I am concerned that we not look like Brookings. I don't know how to say it any more simply. I want this to be a family town. I want this to be a, fam a town that takes care of its own. And why do we have more precious than our children and their health? And um, I realize that we live in a state where the majority of the population is in the Portland Salem area. However, the rest of the state is by and large more rural and very agricultural related. So even though we are a majority of the the volume of this state, we don't have a voice. And I, I don't think this, what Salem decides is necessarily what is good for our community. And so I think I, I want to encourage us to be a family community that fosters, well, just like your mission statement says, because that's part of what drew us here. And I would be disappointed to see a whole different um, attitude and culture develop because of our stance in providing what is considered a legal drug. And um, I think you're all aware, and you have the paper that talks about how at risk children are because their minds are not completely formed, their bodies are not completely formed, and the, um, the potency, uh, my first job was in the juvenile probation department in the town. Back then we dealt with second all and then we got into the psychedelics. And I had a lot of sad stories. Well, now things are a little different. But when you start involving things that change the mind or impact it negatively, those so stories never end happy. So I encourage you to make a decision to continue the family-friendly atmosphere and a good, healthy, small town. We take care of our own attitude. Thank you, ma'am. Well said. Anyone else? Wait a second, Amber, I guess. Oh. Go take it, John. Excuse me. No, go ahead, Steve. I didn't see you. Do you want me to go? Yes, please. And this state your name. Uh, my name is Steve Merrick. I'm the husband of Linda Merrick. And I just have a few things to share. And I thought it was pretty uh, important that we begin to find out these things. Um, I have a little study here uh, online. It's the National Institute on Drug Abuse. Could you speak up, sir? Oh, I'm sorry. My hearing is not that great. Yeah, okay. There's a study that's been put out uh, about the National Institute on Drug Abuse list marijuana under the topic of drugabuse.gov. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. And they made a study of it in June uh, 2018, and uh, I just want to be a little bit brief about it because it has quite an extensive study on it. But it says that marijuana obviously comes from the plant, it refers to dried leaves, flowers, stems, and seeds from the uh, cannabis sativa plant. Okay? So 
So the plant contains mind-altering chemicals called THC and um, other compounds with it as well. And one of the things they brought out here was that how marijuana affects the uh, mind of people. And I thought that was uh, pretty interesting. That's what I figured. Okay, thank you. So anyway, I just want to take a few minutes. To Okay, how it affects the brain. Uh, Short-term effects when a person smokes marijuana. THC, which is the mind-altering chemical in marijuana, quickly passes from the lungs into the bloodstream. The blood carries the chemical to the brain and the other organs with, uh, throughout the body. The body absorbs THC more slowly than the person eats or drinks it. In that case, they generally feel the effects within 30 minutes to an hour. Okay, that's <coughs> THC acts on specific brain cells, receptors, that ordinarily uh, react to natural THC-like chemicals. These natural chemicals play a role in normal brain development and function. Marijuana overactivates parts of the brain that contains the highest number of these receptors. This causes the high that people really want to have. Okay? Other effects include this. This is the thing that got my attention. Um, altered senses. People begin to see things differently. Colors are different. Views of things are different. Can that affect your driving? Can that affect how you walk, how you act, what you do? Altered sense of time. Time frames change in a person under this condition of this drug. Um, changes in mood, impaired body movement, difficulty with thinking and problem solving, impaired memory, hallucinations in higher doses, delusions in higher doses, psychosis in higher uh, doses. Long-term effects. Marijuana also affects brain development. When people begin using marijuana as teenagers, the drug may impair thinking, memory, and learning functions and affect how the brain builds uh, connections between the areas necessary for those functions. Researchers are still studying this area because there's more to learn. But they have learned that much and they have published this um, through the, you know, the national um, drug abuse study that they made. So there's a lot of things that we have to see here that can affect other people. And do we not have people in mind here? Are we not thinking about the best for our youth and for our lives and for our future, amen? I mean, I, I look at that and I say, that's a pretty important thing. And uh, there are examples uh, that I could state, but I won't go to that um, because it would take a little bit too long. Um, in another recent study, um, twins uh, used marijuana showing a significant decline in general knowledge and in verbal ability, equivalent to a four-point IQ difference was affected because of marijuana between the preteen years and early adulthood. But no predictable differences were found between certain, uh, under certain conditions, okay, without going into all that. <coughs> okay, just a few more things. A rise in marijuana's THC levels, which is talking about the mind altering chemical, the amount of THC in marijuana has been increasingly steadily over the past few decades. For a person who is new to marijuana use, this may mean exposure to high THC levels with a greater chance of a harmful reaction. Higher THC levels may explain the rise in emergency room visits involving marijuana. The popularity of edible objects also increases the chance of harmful reactions. Edibles take longer to digest and produce a high. Therefore, people may consume more to feel the effects faster, leading to dangerous results. Higher THC levels may also mean a greater risk for addiction if people are regularly exposing themselves to high doses. And they said something like 30% up to 
30%, all the way up to 30% of people who practice and use marijuana, that most of those will step into an area of developing marijuana disorder. 30%. That's like almost one third. Because of just using it and practicing it, not to mention, I won't be mentioning all the uh, family problems that occur because of the use and the changes that are taking place in these people's lives. Uh, higher THC levels may also mean a greater risk for addiction if people regularly expose themselves to high doses. Sure. Um, going on. But anyway, can I stop by saying this? Yes. Okay. Physical effects, breathing problems, marijuana smokers um, can and will irritate their lungs. And people who smoke marijuana frequently can have the same breathing problems as those that smoke tobacco. These problems include daily cough and phlegm building up in their throats, lung illness, and a higher risk of lung infections. All right. Um, yes, ma'am. Um, I just want to reiterate what I had said at the, at the beginning, yeah. and, and I appreciate yeah. all of the information that you're sharing. I right. really do. And I heard you um, say that, yes. The, what is before the council right now is not, because um, we, even at the conditional use level, that wasn't what was before the council, but the, there's a conditional use permit for a business, and I so um, the, the decision that's before the council tonight is just affirm the decision they made last month to extend the permit or overturn it and their permit is expired. But it's not, it's not on the merit of, of whether marijuana is good, bad, or otherwise. It's just procedurally is the permit still valid. That, so if people want to address that, why they feel that the permit is not valid or the permit is valid, that's what we want to hear. And I, like I said, I appreciate so much that you have, uh, that everyone has strong views one way or the other about um, marijuana itself. But tonight, what we're here to discuss is, did the permit expire or did the permit not expire? Sure, I understand. I so, say this respectfully. Um, uh, I understand that was a condition. I didn't know that when, you know, that before we came. But actually, really, I'm talking about people in real lives and children and people that nature, but uh, it should have been settled probably in the first session. Yeah. Yes, sir. Right. And so I just don't want you to think that we don't care and that is, it is an important, but yeah. but procedurally what we are here to discuss is did the permit expire or did it not expire? Okay. So, right. but thank you very much sure. for your testimony. Sure. Yeah. And then the question that I'd like to address <laughs> is uh, Amber Hughes, and I'd like to address procedures and priorities. And um, I believe that your administrator was absolutely correct in saying that the permit had expired. They had not met the conditions of it in a timely fashion. And I understand there was some dreadful things going on in their lives and things fell. Their priorities changed. All of a sudden, living life is your priority and all this other stuff is not. And I understand that. However, um, what really concerns me is that one of the things that fell by the way wayside was paying the bill to the point where this city had to almost impose a lien. That's, uh, that's not just forgetting a month at a time. That's just not forgetting one or two things. This was, this was a significant amount, a number of bills that went unpaid to the point where the meter was actually removed. So that was a priority that went so far down, but yet now it's to be our first priority. And I, I do not believe that that's correct. They did not meet the conditions of the permit, period. And uh, I think that's where this council may have erred in overturning their administrator. So I just wanted to share that. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Anyone else? All right, council. Anybody like to start? going to, um, since there was crickets there for a moment, um, on page 117 of the packet, the, the, the two options you have before you tonight are affirm your decision from April or overturn your decision from April. Those are, those are your, your two, um, 
two options available, and on either option, um, I just I just need to know what your um, citation is going to be. You know that. All right. you know, whatever you want that to be. So okay, Council. You have, as the administrator stated, two choices. Um, yes, Council Brent is the is your representative. There is not. I did. Um, I did send them a. Um, I'm. I'm losing my words now. Sorry. Um, I did send them a notice of it in the mail. You know that. Hey, this is coming up again. And I did warn um, Rosa after the last one that she really needed to stay on top of things down here to prevent something like this happening. Now that's my question that I've written down, and forgive me if I interrupt. And, and I've heard nothing from them. All right, so. that's what I was going to ask. Have you heard anything, has any progress been made? Obviously not. In the past two months, nothing? I've heard nothing from them. I think that speaks kind of like volumes in itself. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just reviewed what we, the letter that the administrator sent actually it was a planning director who was the same person no, I'm sure. um, trying to remember what the reasons were that we overturned it and I don't believe that the administrator had known when she determined made the decision that it had expired that the building permit had, had been applied for she did not know that there was a problem with OLCC and that it was not the applicant's fault that they didn't have a license it was OLCC's delay mm -hmm. out of their control and the third was she didn't know that they had a serious medical condition and that it's actually a very small company, even though it sounds like it's a big company. Um, and I don't think we've heard um, any evidence that's contrary to that. Um, she, they did have a building permit. Um, they did apply for the license and just hadn't had it yet. Um, and she did, I mean, other than send, well, she did send a picture. Um, of the serious medical condition, so I, I don't think anything's changed there. Um, they have until October to get it done. Um, if they don't, then we go to the next step. But I don't see enough evidence brought today specific to this application to change our mind. We heard a lot about how horrible marijuana is, and you know, it's across the street from the liquor store, and alcohol is probably way worse than <coughs> drug in America than any. But, um, it, this isn't about marijuana, it's about did the business have a valid license. And I, I believe they did, and I believe, and I think the administrator has agreed that if, as the planning director, she knew these three things, she wouldn't have made that determination. So I, I think our decision was just damned. All right, thank you, ma'am. Is there any, anyone else have anything to say? Councilor Brown. Uh, in this letter, you're talking about October. No, and as far as I know, um, they're still, they haven't um, acted on the building permit. And I don't know how long, I don't know how long that will stay valid if they don't act on it. Because back in the day, and this was quite some time ago, um, if you didn't get an inspection within 180 days, um, but I don't, I don't know if they've had some kind of inspection. There are other conditions of the permit that they have to fulfill um, before they can open um, that relate specifically to the city, certain city staff inspections that would have to be conducted, and that hasn't happened. Council uh, if, if we overturn our previous decision, they would have to start all over, correct? Correct. Okay. Then, then it would revert back to the original decision that um, me acting in my capacity as the planning director said it was expired and um, just to clarify I knew that they had a permit when I wrote the letter I mean that they had applied for a permit but as of that date they had not acted on the permit um, but I did not know until afterwards on the OLCC because when the OLC, when I contacted the OLCC they just said no they don't have a license 
and they didn't give me any more information. And then later on, um, the OLCC staff member emailed me and said, I should clarify, no, they don't have a license, but it's not because they have applied. But that wasn't the first. So when I wrote my letter, it was just they did not have a license. So it's like, okay, well, if you don't have a license with the state, you can't sell marijuana here anyway. Um, yeah. What, what bothers me in this is that uh, the, the council agreed to go ahead and give them six four months until October. Two months of that have passed, and you haven't heard a word, the city has not have heard a word from them. And that, and granted, they had the six. But within that two month period, you would think that there would be some sign of uh, compliance or getting things going or making sure that the city knew that we were actually moving forward, that type of thing. We haven't heard it. You know, I, that personally, that bothers me. Um, but that's, that's me and uh, council. You have to make the decision, so is there anything anyone else would like to say on this? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> What's the status of the um, water services? Um, they paid to have it reconnected, which was a significant cost. They had to pay about $3,500 to get the meter replaced and, re and bring their um, account up to date. Um, it will take me just a minute, but I can um, I can go and check and see what the status of their utility account is currently. If you want to talk amongst yourselves, I can look that up. All right, thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I don't know if that's really appropriate. And that's technically private information, and it would not be part of a, any other application. Um, it's hard to get a builder in this community. It's hard to get you know, anything, no offense, but it's not the easiest to work with the county. I think they just hired, they had a building position leave, and I think they have a new one. So, I mean, it's not the easiest place to work in. We only have one electrician. I, I think you're asking them to do something in two months that isn't possible. So, uh, and if you have a valid reason to overturn the decision we made in April, I'm happy to talk about it, but I don't see one. It's not a question of, of uh, them making some sort of real progress in the, in the span of two months, Council, at least to me. It's a question of being able to at least communicate, you know, which evidently has been lacking, and uh, we haven't seen anything of it. And so that, once again, that bothers me. Because it, it doesn't show any real motivation. Now there could be, a, a, you know, it could be a relapse of the illness for all we know. But if it is, then certainly the, sh the city should know that. Yes, ma'am. What normal communication would an applicant have with the city in that two months? Telephone the city and say, "Listen, we are going to do this, this, or this." What other applicant does? That? Is my question. I don't think that's well, my question. Well, no. Your question is residing around the fact that the person has not had their permit taken away from them. Okay. This person had. Then the council, and, and in the goodness of their hearts, they listened to the story. They felt sorry. And they decided to give that person another chance. So now we're not talking about somebody just the first time and we saying, okay, well, how are you doing on it? But rather we're now saying, listen, we've given you this chance and we still haven't heard from you. That to me is a difference. Councilor Campbell. Um, I think if we gave them until October, we should hold by our commitment and give them until October. And if by October, um, we could revisit it. But I agree with Ms. Coughlin that no new information has been generated to change our original decision. All right, thank you, ma'am. 
All right. Oh, uh, McGowan, do you have anything you'd like to say? I agree. We gave him until October. I mean, it's been two months. We have four months left. If they don't do anything in the four months, then we don't have to look at it again. They, they're expired at that point. All right. And for the next six months, I think we should stick to our scheme based on the information we have. All right. I'm sure chill this week. Okay. Councilor Madison. Well, as much as I appreciate the professional courtesy of communication, that is not an obligation or something that we asked from them uh, when, we, when we did make this uh, decision. So uh, let's just hope that they follow through. If not, we'll revisit in October. Uh, thank you, Councilor Brown? I agree with that. And just um, as far as procedurally goes, in the zoning code, um, an applicant can ask for a one-year extension to an approved conditional use permit, um, but it's not an automatic thing. It just, I mean, they can request it, and the, it, typically it's the Planning Commission, but you are the decision-making body for this particular issue, so it would be the City Council. So um, I, I would say that um, at the expiration of this on this October 8th that they are not in um, there's a definition in the code about substantial compliance meaning you know they've got their contractor they're they're something you know right. they're applying mud to the walls you know things are you know progressing but if if by the time we get to October if they're still exactly where they are today I would say that if they asked for another extension then that would be the time to say you haven't moved on anything. Right. So. All right, so then as far as the decision that was made, it, it uh, will not be rescinded, it stands. Okay, so do you want me to update you at the council meetings on if, I'd like if to I hear, hear any progress? Personally, I'd like to hear. And um, to Councillor Kaufman's comment, I would say, um, it's not typical that people report to me, but there have been people in the past um, that that do actually come in all the time and say, this is where we're at, this is what we've got done, because they're excited to talk about it. But I would say it's not, it's certainly not a requirement and um, not something that, that we ask, unless it's something that we have to come inspect, which this particular one, I, I would think, you know, we're getting close to the four months. There's some inspections that the city staff has to make and we've not been contacted, so. Yes, ma'am. Um, if I may make a comment that's related to the subject but separate from this issue, um, we did make changes to the ordinance um, based on this application and the other two applications. You can now no longer have one within a thousand feet of each other. Mm -hmm. So as long as that permit is there, there can't be another one within a thousand feet of it. And then within a thousand feet, we've got the school, so then it's got to be a thousand feet from the school. All right. So by having this permit active, it's actually preventing anybody else from applying for one. So it actually is meeting what many of the community has asked for today by limiting the number. It's not perfect, and if they never do it, then well, it'll be out of that, application. Yeah, and on top of that, we really can't stop those applications anyway. Even if, you know, it is legal and I'm, in my particular case, unfortunate, but, but nevertheless, um, they have every right to establish a business here. Mr. Yes, Mayor, may I ask one question of the council? Yes, you may. I, I just want to ask, have, have we, the people of this community, had an opportunity to speak to you in April on this issue? Maybe there would have been a different outcome but we were not afforded that opportunity. So perhaps mindfully in the future, that can be taken into account. Thank you. Well, well taken. Thank you, ma'am. I also have a question. I know it's late. I can't hear you. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, maybe I have a misconception, and if so, you all can just put that to rest. Um, I realize that businesses can apply but is there any jurisdiction that you have to control the influence of how that will change the face of the town? In other words, if adult bookstore wanted to come in or uh, you know, a sex shop or something, <coughs> are you required by law to process that? 
and do you have to grant it, even though that's not what we want our town to look like? Yes, ma'am. Um, for those two particular items, um, there's actually a whole body of law about um, exclusionary zoning, mm -hmm. and um, because this came up about six years ago, about somebody wanted to was just asking about a strip club, but um, there's actually case law about having exclusionary, exclusionary zoning. So the short answer is um, no, we can't prohibit it, um, but we can um, limit it, and that's exactly what. And I'm probably getting into more. You weren't here at the original hearings. Um, um, what some cities chose to do was that, okay, they're allowed state law, so the cities just said, okay, it's a business, you just need to come in and get a business license. The city of Pearl Beach, after many hearings, decided, okay, we weren't gonna allow that particular business to be an outright use. So if somebody wanted to open a marijuana shop, it was not just a matter of coming in and get a business license. Like if somebody wants to open a restaurant, well actually restaurants not even one, let's say a, 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 like a shop like your son, okay? All he needs to do is come in and get a business license and he can open his shop. There, there is no special review that needs to be done, but the city felt like because there was, just as you guys have spoke, this was exactly what you guys have said. We, I, I, have, I have a file about gay big on marijuana. <laughs> um, and, and we've heard those concerns. And so what the council did was said, okay, we're not gonna allow them outright. We're gonna make them go through a conditional use process. There's, um, I wanna say 12 conditions that have to be met. And then if at the hearing, there's additional things after getting testimony, and in this particular application, there was, there was two applications, actually three applications that have been um, submitted so far. One was approved, but it expired. Um, one was denied, and then this one was approved with many conditions. So there was the 12 conditions that were in the code to begin with, and then there was about three more conditions that were added on top of it based on the concerns at the hearings. So, what the council tried to do was um, mitigate the concerns that the neighbors had and that people like yourself had. So there were extra conditions that were added. And then after that hearing, the council said, okay, because this, this was such a huge issue and it went on for months, let's go back and revisit our conditional use process and say, okay, from now on, we have the 12 conditions and we're gonna add one more, meaning they can't be located within a thousand feet of each other because the two applications that we had originally were actually right next door to one another. So, um, so there's that extra added protection. And for um, the minister and for you guys, we have a map of the area that a potential marijuana business could go in is actually very small when you exclude the thousand foot around both of the schools and then the thousand foot around individual businesses. And as Councillor Kaufman um, pointed out, while it's kind of by default, but because this permit is still active, it, there's actually really, unless they wanted to put one out in Hunter Creek proper, right. there's really nowhere in the city limits now where another shop could go in. Um, so my question is, <laughs> do we have the right as a community to keep a family friendly town or just stay and have us in an arm lock that we don't have much room to maneuver? I don't know. It was on the ballot for the city. Mm -hmm. uh, did did we want to have marijuana or not? And the answer was yes, that was approved. Mm -hmm. So that was why the council said, okay, the citizens inside the city voted to allow um, marijuana stores in Gold Beach. I think that was before we moved here. So right. yeah, this was three. So I have a little catching up to do, but I need to know how much room you have, or whether it's just. The law is the law, the state issues it, and we have to comply or we <coughs> legal action. So I don't know. The city voters chose to not prohibit right. them. Right. Okay. So when that decision was made, the the citizens that wanted to prohibit them um, basically came to the council and said, okay, you know, the majority of people voted to say yes, we want to have them. However, we don't feel like it should be just willy nilly. Right. Um, and so that's so why the restrictions. Yep. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Good. And, then and that's the super readers' digest version. Okay. Yeah. I. You know. 
from my perspective, I've seen towns really go downhill. Of being Medford 25 years ago was a very beautiful city. They had beautiful tree plantings for color. They had parks. They had wonderful soccer fields. And now, when I go back there and visit, I see all these marijuana shops. I see all, it just looks like a low life place. And I'm just thinking the whole tenor of the town in the downtown section is not the Medford I knew. And I would hate to see that happen here because I think you have something very special here, and I would hate to lose that. Thank you, ma'am. I think we have something very special here, too. All right. Well. Okay, so I will, at, for the next four months, I will update the council on what I have heard or not heard regarding this application. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So, can, would you guys mind making a motion that we're going to affirm the decision that was made in April? I'll make a motion that we affirm the decision in April regarding the condition use permit for Ramona GDC 1701. A second. Motion been made and seconded by Councilor Kim. Discussion? Question? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. All right, now we have an FYI only, I think. Yeah, it's, um, oh, and thank you all that, for yeah. your concern on both sides. We, we appreciate your public involvement. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is FYI only. Um, I think some of you received, it probably the newer counselors did not, but um, I cannot think of Cheryl's last name. I wanted to call it um, McDermott. Ms. McDermott from the hospital um, had contacted. Um, the city and you guys individually, but like I said, I, I think she had the old counselor, so you may not have gotten the email from her. But basically, it was um, a, a quick request. There was going to be a hearing on Senate Bill 941, which was specific to the emergency room in Brookings, and they asked if the city could send a letter of support. So um, I talked with Mr. Mayor, and um, we put a letter together. And that letter was sent on the 23rd because they needed it by the 24th for their lobbyists. So that's just a copy of the letter that we sent on behalf of the city. And then just a little bit of information about what Senate Bill 941 was. Whenever we get asked to write letters, I always try to do a little research to find out what exactly it is we're being asked to approve of. So that's just some general information for you. So. Anything, anybody have anything? Okay, let's go ahead and move on. It is getting rather late. Yes. Um, the city administrator? Yep, and I, I gave a copy of the report to you. It should be in front of you. And I'm going to just go through it real quickly. Um, Public Works, uh, the crew's been working on a lot of new services lately, which is a good sign because putting in new services means that new construction is going to be coming hopefully shortly thereafter. And just for those of you that may or may not know, across from the um, the Calvary Chapel down by the post office, um, a gentleman and his wife um, purchased that huge tract that goes all the way up the hill to the Black Building. And they are going to be developing the lower portion to begin with, but they have a phased plan that they hope to do over the span of years. And so we're pretty excited about that. We just installed their water and sewer service two weeks ago, so hopefully um, they are in the process of getting their building permits. I want to say they got the permits issued last week, so they're going to start um, on that. Uh, Will has been spending a lot of time lately trying to um, track down water loss. He's um, very, very rabid about, you know, when our, what, what our sales versus what he produces don't match, he gets very concerned about that. And so they have um, located this month two pretty significant potential lost sites. <coughs> so they installed meters at those places, and we'll see maybe if that's where some of our loss is. And it's not anything you know that we're doing wrong or whatever. It's just it's just kind of a personal mission of his that he wants to ensure our water is going where it needs to go. Um, the police stats are attached. Um, we finally got the repaired. PD rig back this past week, and then Kim said that maybe we didn't have it back. Uh, it wasn't. 
it wasn't fixed correct. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so it's back, but it's not. <laughs> um, the fire department, our rescue team, uh, rescued a gentleman on May 20th out in Pistol River. It was somebody that was attempting to get to Brookings in uh, really high weather. We've had some high, high wind events lately, so I'm not sure why he attempted to go down there. But anyway, our guys successfully rescued him. So there's some photographs there. Um, we did respond mutual aid to CFPA on a wildfire in Pistol River this weekend. Um, it was out by Myers Road, and evidently there was a burn pile that got out of control at night. We have had wind all last week, so why somebody was burning, I don't know. That's um, outside our jurisdiction. Um, Debbie had reported that the visitors to the center were way down for May. Um, she feels it's related to the sign being gone, but um, we do have a visible temp sign, so I, I think that it's more related to the slide. I think there's still the perception, because when I go out of town to meetings, there's still this question on, is the road open? And it's like, the road's been open for a while. So um, I don't have the room stats yet for May, because uh, they have until today to report, and they usually trickle in a couple of days after. So if it looks like the room stats are down, I think that's an indication that it's the road. Um, if the room stats are not down, then, then maybe it is the sign. But, um, and the sign has been a torturous process. It was supposed to be in in December, and it's June, and let's just say we won't be buying signs from this particular person again. So, um, so the monthly stats for lodging are attached through April. Um, on, on an up note for regional tourism, I was reading online this weekend, and our stretch of Highway 101 was voted the best coastal road trip in America by Coastal Living Magazine. So that was a good thing. And in the uh, in the article, they featured Myers Beach and um, some some snapshots of Samuel Borman. So that was pretty cool. Um, we had the annual Memorial Day celebration at the um, Veterans Memorial. And as usual, the FW, they're the guys that put it on. We are just there to support them. They did a fabulous job. And I had thanked everybody there except for Dr. Carlson. And she did such a fabulous job, so I wanted to call that out specifically here, that she sings uh, the last three years now. Uh, um, she's done the national anthem and then also God Bless America. And she does it a cappella. It's amazing. And so when she was doing um, God Bless America, at the very end when she was like doing the high note, the jets flew over. It was just like, you know, that was kind of cool. But for the second year in a row, we couldn't sing it. Yeah, but we heard them, but you, she was singing, and then all of a sudden you heard yeah. these jets go, and we could feel the wash. And I was like, oh, that was pretty cool. Um, it's officially the end of the year, which is the second worst time of the year for me. So um, that's my life. I'm still dealing with some legal issues that I hope to, hopefully that will be wrapped up soon and I can report back to you about that. And then um, as per Counselor Kaufman's wise advice to me for the last several years, I'm gonna attempt to take some time off in uh, hopefully at the end of June or maybe the beginning of July to uh, um, get some family stuff going on so hopefully I can take a little time off and deal with that. Okay, so that's it, that's all I got. All righty. Thank you, ma'am. <coughs> Councilor Madison, do you have anything to do? Do I have a list? You do have a list. You know Tammy does. She does. You do have a list. Three quick. <laughs> um, the Housing Task Force has asked that we present our housing study once it's finalized. They asked this past meeting. I asked them to wait until next month, so we'll do that. Um, let's see. Um, Ariel mentioned uh, I was at the economic development training. So yeah, I'm getting my certification through the state. So that will be a benefit to us eventually. And then lastly, um, fire season is in effect tomorrow. So no more burn permits. Tyson tells me we're not issuing any. No more burning after today. And the CFPA's got that information out there. 
And I, I don't think he's closed. Um, I don't think we're where you can't mow your lawn yet, but I think we're getting close. Yeah, so CFPA um, submitted or published um, the regs and where we're at on there. So if you kind of just follow their Facebook page, get on their mailing list, then you'll know. I think I heard that Brent said that this is the first time in history that it's gone, it hasn't gone to a conditional use permit. It's got straight to close. It's it's early. Usually it's oh, yeah. early. Yeah. No. Well, yeah. Usually things don't start getting bad till the fourth of July. Yeah. Four days early. Four days earlier than last year. And that was early. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Councilor Brennan. Oh bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Brennan. Um, I just wanted to say how nice that I think the benches look throughout town. Oh, okay. I think it turned out really yeah. good. Um, interior cover looks really nice with the plants and the trees. On Wednesday, if anybody has lots of things to do, come to uh, Rogue Outdoor Store. We're doing that one next. Okay. Um, uh, I think no Councilor Campbell. Nothing, sir. I Please. If I had anything, I'd be tired of Please. <laughs> Councilor Kaufman, what do you have? I, I'm too tired to remember. <laughs> Well, you know, this is going to be kind of a first for me either. I don't have anything to say. And if I did, I'd probably want to keep it to myself. There is a typo in the agenda. Our next meeting is not July 15th, it's July 8th. I, I finished this at like 2 in the morning, and oh, obviously okay. I was looking at the wrong month because it's the second Monday, it's the 8th, not the 15th. Here so. the bell. All right. Does anybody want to say anything out there? Nice. Thank you. Uh, we're out yeah. painting the curbs on Main Street. What's that? Huh? Out painting the curbs on Main Street. You named a curb on Main, Main Street. Painting, painting. The, the yellow curb. The painting. I saw the crew today. They're yeah. painting the curb. Oh, painting it. That's, That's another mission. Will likes to have the curbs painted by Fourth of July. Yeah. Very nice. You yeah. see that now, George the curb. You know, I just. And then we and the weed eating is awesome. Yes. I just wanted to thank I you. I do ask, I wear my hearing aids more often. I just want to thank you all. You guys have a thankless job, but thank you very much for volunteering. For this. Well, thank you, Amber, for saying that. And for those of you that don't know, that dear lady spent at least, what was it, four years on the council herself. Well, a, lot, a lot less than that, but it felt like four years. <laughs> <laughs> no, at any rate, that was. That was, uh, that was some time ago now. Mm -hmm. All right. The next regularly scheduled city council meeting is Monday the 8th. I have on my calendar. 6th? Did you say 6th or 8th? 8th. 8th. Yeah. The 8th, it'll be 6.30 right here. And with any luck, uh, it won't be this thick. Yeah. So... With that, I want to thank you all so very much for being here and sticking this out with us. I want to thank the council for a, a, a nicely run meeting. Well, actually, I ran the meeting, so I want to thank me. But I want to thank you guys for doing your bit. So then, uh, good night, everybody, and bless your heart. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's Mary and I forgot to <laughs> I am sorry. I just question. <laughs> Bye. 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 Okay. Bye. It's official now. Bye. In a Bye. <laughs>